Hello everybody, so today we're going to do a video on the Link ECU and how to do starter relay control via the ECU. So, let's get into it. Right, so as discussed in this video, we're going to look at starter relay control with the Link ECU. What we're going to start off with first of all is we're going to go into exactly how it works, what wires you require and obviously how we have it set up in this particular system and all the other options that are available to you. Okay, so because we're going to be working with the engine, I'm not going to do just a screen grab kind of video, but hopefully with the video you'll be able to see all of the things that I'm looking at over here. Okay, so to start off with, what I mean by starter relay control, so effectively what I'm saying is that the ECU is controlling the starter relay and therefore it's no longer a system where you would just turn the key and effectively it would then um, turn over the starter motor. So how exactly does it work and what wires are we using? So it is a pretty simple system to do the most basic version. All that you would require effectively is some kind of signal to the ECU to tell it that the vehicle needs to start cranking. So in this case, we're using a digital input for starter control. Um, in our harness, it's built into the fuse box there. You just send a 12 volt signal to it and then boom, it will then do that. Now, because it's using a digital input, you don't necessarily have to use a 12 volt uh, trigger for it. You can use a ground trigger. Um, that can be changed in the settings over there. We set it up like that just because most of the people are either gonna be using a, a key barrel of some sort, in which case it will be a 12 volt signal. It would require a whole mission of using a relay to turn it into a negative, and that would just be not cost effective to add something that wasn't really required, considering the ECU is quite happy to accept a starter signal. Obviously, we fuse that starter signal so that there's no possible way of doing any damage to the ECU in the event that that particular 12 volts coming in had to short out. So again, absolutely no dramas there whatsoever. So moving on to the software now, it's really, really simple. If you go down your menu over here under configuration and you go into chassis and body, then you're gonna have all the different various functions that you can control on the chassis or the body of the vehicle. And in this case, we are looking at starter control. So you see that's one, two, three, four from the top. And that is where we're gonna start looking at all the settings that we can input. All right, just a caveat from the get-go, whenever you open the link software, you have this massive help section over here. And obviously that is then gonna tell you all the details on the various different options that you have available to you there. So nice and simple, we'll start off with the top now. That is where you look at your start switch mode and we'll go through that in a minute. Then you are inputting your starter relay output, which in our case is auxiliary eight. You've then got your auxiliary eight test, so you can actually test the relay to make sure it's working correctly. You then have your auxiliary eight active state. So in our case, we are going low. So in other words, we are using the ground side of the starter relay to then activate it and the other side of the starter relay is getting an ignition 12 volts. Okay, so it only works when the ignition is on. Then obviously you have got your starter deactivation RPM. So this is quite important. So basically what you wanna try and do is set that up to a degree where your starter motor is not gonna keep running when you don't want it to. In this case, we've opted for 600 RPM, but you probably could go as low as 500 RPM. You should be cranking somewhere around between two and 300 RPM for most engines. So obviously you wanna keep it above where you're cranking, but below where it's gonna start grinding the starter motor, all right? So 600 RPM in this particular case is absolutely fine, but you can play with that and you can see what works best for you. All right, now then you have a whole bunch of conditions that can be used in order to make it safer, I suppose, if you wanna say that. So first of all, you've got use neutral park lockout. Okay, so if you had a gearbox with like a, some sort of neutral switch, you could then actually use that to supply the ECU via another digital input and that would mean that the starter motor would not activate okay if the um new, if the vehicle wasn't in neutral okay so that's there you do have use anti theft lockout so that requires you to set up the anti theft system but if you had that again it would not allow the starter to activate in that particular case 
Uh, another common one here is you can use a clutch lockout. So it doesn't sort of, it's not as complicated as it seems. Basically what they mean is you fit a clutch switch and then effectively the vehicle won't start unless the clutch is engaged. Okay, so in this case with this particular harness, we obviously haven't allocated a clutch switch, but the customer does have a auxiliary digital input plug with I think about four digital inputs so he could quite happily take one of those and feed it to a clutch switch if he wanted to. The next one is to use speed lockout. So again, that is exactly as it sounds. So what you could basically do is you could set the system that if the if you have a speed input, so again, this one could have a speed input added to it because it's got an available digital input on the system. You could then tell it to not activate the starter if it's above two kilometers so as long as you're moving even if you accidentally press the button or you accidentally turn the key it's not going to make a difference the ecu is not going to engage the actual starter okay then the last one which is also quite important is what we call the max crank time and what that basically means is the maximum time it will turn the engine over before it cuts out okay now again you can set this to as long or as short as you want if you find that your engine starting in like two or three seconds set it to four seconds it's absolutely no problem at all and what i'm going to do as part of this video is i'm just going to show you um, exactly how that works obviously we've got the entire engine here so i'm happy to crank that over and show you exactly what happens okay right so starting at the start switch mode obviously you'll have your options available to you so you've got off and test which is obviously you know one way of doing it then you have your normal mode okay so that basically the normal mode behaves the same way as a typical vehicle starting system the key is turned and the engine will crank until the key is released okay so in other words if you choose normal and you touch the starter wide at 12 volts it'll only crank as long as that starter is physically or that starter input is active okay as soon as you let it go it's not going to start from there okay next up you have your start stop and that allows the use of a single button for both starting and stopping the engine okay when the engine is stalled pressing the button will crank the motor over and then once it's actually running pressing the button again will stall the engine so it's kind of like exactly what it says it's a start stop switch okay so in most cases and that's the case you would just have one button you would press it and then it would start and then you would press it again and it would kill the engine without turning the ignition off obviously we don't do that particular setup just because it's not something that you would have on like a modern vehicle in that regard so in this case you would just turn the ignition off when you want to kill the engine but the customer can obviously change these settings if they want as well now the option that we go for is what we call the touch start so that allows a starter motor button or the key that can be momentarily pressed to start the engine so that's what i talk about when i say i'm just literally touching it on start and then what happens is it'll go boom 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 and it'll actually take all these things will kick in like reaching maximum 600 rpm or maximum crank time of five seconds okay so that is the way that I do it because it's like a modern car, you know, with the push button starts, you just press the button once and then the car will crank over until it starts. So those, those are the different ways that you can actually do it. All right, so obviously we try and do this wherever, we, wherever is possible simply because it is a nice way to control the starter motor. It means you don't sit there cranking, cranking, cranking for absolutely ages. And usually you shouldn't have to if an engine doesn't start within five seconds. It's clearly something else wrong that you need to look at over there. Okay, so... What we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna show this in practice. So again, what I'm gonna do is at the moment, we I've disconnected the fuel from the engine, so she's actually not going to physically start up. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna touch the wire over there on 12 volts. You're gonna see that the starter motor is gonna turn over. It's gonna turn over for five seconds and then it is going to stop, okay? So if I quickly pop over here, I've got my starter wire over here. I'm just going to touch it, and then you'll see for five seconds it's going to turn over. So, one, two, three, four, five. There you go. Okay. So, that is five seconds over there. So, you can see that is actually quite a while that it turns over. And so, what I'm going to do now, just to show you how that works, I'm going to change it down to three seconds. We're going to store that on there. I'm going to touch it again and you're going to hear the exact same thing, but obviously it's going to be much shorter. So one, two, three. See, so that has actually cranked over for a short amount of time now. Now clearly it's not stopped because RPM has not gone above 600 RPM. 
okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to obviously connect the fuel pump up. I'm gonna then go to crank it and then you're gonna see that it's gonna start and you're gonna hear that the starter motor doesn't grind or anything like that because obviously the ECU is controlling it. And as soon as it goes above 600 RPM, it's then actually gonna stop cranking. Right, so we'll do that again quickly. So you can see we're not getting any sort of starter motor grinding or anything like that clearly because obviously the ECU is seeing 600 RPM and it's actually cutting it off. All right. So what we're going to do now is, oh, let me just turn the ignition back on again. So as exactly, exactly as I said, obviously we're just cutting the ignition off to obviously kill the engine itself. All right. So let's put it all back on again so we can set it all up. Right, so obviously what we can do as well, so you see here we put 600 RPM in, but we could probably go, let's try 400 RPM and see if that works. So again, what you can always do under your tuning section is you can actually see what engine RPM it's cranking over at. So what I will do quickly now is as we go to start it, you'll see exactly what RPM it's cranking at, and that'll always be a good indication. So at the moment we set it down to 400 RPM, down so as you can clearly see you can go down as low as 400 rpm obviously with the well-tuned engine 400 rpm for your starter will be absolutely fine what i'm going to do now is i'm actually just going to go and crank it with the fuel disconnected so then we'll be able to monitor exactly how fast the engine is turning over now do bear in mind this is an engine on a stand it's got no gearbox or anything like that but this will give a really good indication to how low you could possibly set it so i'll just go now So you can see there on the RPM gauge, we are cranking at around about 200 RPM, okay? So clearly, if we set the starter motor to cut off at like 250 RPM, we'd probably still be all right, but anything lower than that, and obviously it's not going to then start effectively. All right, so hopefully that is helpful for you guys so that you can obviously see exactly what's going on. Again, feel free, the help section over there goes into great detail about the starter control, but I thought I'd show you just quickly how we do it and obviously a very simple and basic way. You'll see we've got almost no lockouts here because we haven't allocated any type of speed or clutch input or anything like that. But as I said, you can do that and you can make it really nice if you want like a nice modern vehicle so you could have a clutch switch with the push button start, you press the button once, boom, engine fires up into life. Um, obviously, you can have the other option over there that we went through, which is obviously the start-stop, where you can actually use a start-stop button. And therefore, what you can do with that is then you can do exactly what it says there. So you can actually turn the engine on and off without having to turn the ignition, okay? So that's also quite a useful feature if you guys want with your race car, where you don't particularly want to turn the ignition off to kill the engine. Nice option to have there. But because we've wired up everything in this harness, and like I said, with pretty much all of our Link ECUs, we do try and do that so you guys have these sorts of functionality available to you. But hopefully that's been super helpful. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And as usual, if there's anything that you guys want to go through on Link, any issues that you've had, any particular thing that you'd like to get set up or would know how to, would like to know how to set up, please let us know. We're always in contact with Link Technical. So any question you ask me, I will get an answer for you and I'll make a video so that you guys know exactly what to do. But thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.